Okay, today I want to talk about how to use Tor Browser properly and basically stand by a few rules. Leave the smallest footprint possible. That's super important. Basically, the whole idea behind Tor Browser and what it does really well is make all Tor Browser users look the same. You'll end up being given different Tor nodes. This node won't know which one this one is and this one won't know which one the other one is. It's only opening the onion. The reason it's called an onion network is because it's like layers of an onion. Now if you break some of these rules, that's gonna not work that way anymore. Number two, blend in with the rest of Tor users. Back to number one, leave the smallest footprint possible. Beware of large files. That's something that could make someone stand out on the Tor network. For example, let's take a look at the architecture of the Tor network here. And let's pretend we see all Tor users and we have a full scope of vision on all the packets going in and out of each machine here. Now if we did have such a large scope of vision, we could see if someone was downloading a very large file, we could correlate that possibly, but you'd have to have a field of vision on all of the machines or at least end to the other end to do so. So that's a rule to stick by. That's one reason Tor Browser warns you about downloading files. You need to be careful of that and if you do use any file downloading you need to make sure you use an onion for that. Something like onion shares another option here. Use end-to-end -end encryption. That's another rule. Use the onion address whenever possible. So for example my video recently where I went over some of the ways you could use Twitter and YouTube more anonymously by using a front end. I also went over the fact that like you see up here at the top there's also onion addresses you can use to access all of YouTube videos. That's a much more private way to do so as you can see there's many connections in between plus it's encrypted between the Tor client on your end of the browser and also the Tor client for that onion itself. There's no middle party you're not depending on HTTPS which in itself it is encrypted but there's a middle party at play and you're putting your trust into that middle party that certificate authority and what can happen as well as that is a man in the middle attack can happen with HTTPS now with end-to-end -end encryption the encryption won't actually work if someone were to try something like that or the key itself would have to change, you'd have to accept the new key. So that's one reason you need to stick to end-to-end -end encryption. Now, number four, what I put was situational awareness. That's basically keeping an eye on everything you're doing and how that might be playing out, how that could stand out as unique, and how a possible bad exit node could work against you you need to be sure you're at least using HTTPS because that at least provides some protection from a potential bad exit node looking at your data. So always use an onion when possible. You also gotta watch out for metadata. If you're uploading files, say you're uploading pictures, you need to be aware that every file that you have is timestamped based on your computer's time. That can be correlated to your location or at least in the range of your location so keep in mind when you sign up for websites you can also give away your time zone so everything that you do on Tor Browser you have to keep in mind that if your goal is to stay anonymous you need to really be aware of the information that you're putting out and could anything be linked to you or could anything relate to your own interests so say you talk about hobbies or you talk about the type of work you do. That's another check mark on something that comes close or actually does identify you. And I also have some other videos that I do want to recommend that I made before that can help give you a better understanding if you haven't already watched them. 
take a look at my anonymous Twitter and YouTube, which has the front ends with the onion addresses. I also did a blog post on that offering some of the onion addresses for that. Take a look at the privacy, what about metadata. This all links to using Tor Browser properly. If you have an understanding of these videos, this will really improve your privacy on Tor. Go ahead and look at spoof GPS location in your pictures. As mentioned, all those things are covered in the privacy what is metadata. It talks about how each file has identifying information from possibly your name to your time to the program used to save that picture. And from here, those things can be linked back to the user. If you have a unique serial number on your pictures or your camera, that information could uniquely identify your pictures all over the internet. There's a lot to keep in mind here, but it's all about situational awareness, and that's what being safe on Tor Browser is all about. There's also Fire Jail to increase your privacy on Linux. I talk about ways you can block access to MAC address files. I also highly recommend using YPry. Uh, it is a set of scripts I wrote that I put a lot of unique features into. It's the first thing I always install on a new device because your permanent MAC address can really give away your location everywhere you step foot. There's all kinds of MAC address listeners that are logging and sharing in a cloud-like setting where every little place that you've been on a map can be pointed out quite easily if you're not spoofing your MAC address. And it also has things like uh, Mac checking where it ensures that even if your firmware crashes, that it holds that static Mac address that it has chosen for you. And there's a, a few settings there. Also take a look at my VPN versus Tor ClearNet versus Tor Hidden Service. This will give you a better understanding if you're not aware of the difference between Tor ClearNet, Tor Hidden Services, and the end-to-end -end encryption therein and also the difference between a VPN. And of course, the onion address is always suggested as I put in the notes here. And you gotta watch out for things like files calling home. This has been in a historic way that users have been de-anonymized. They download a file, you gotta be careful downloading files. Some people have downloaded video or audio that then connects out what's called calling home and at that point the direct connection is made from your actual IP address and a remote server. I actually wrote a Python script to demonstrate this. You can check that out on my GitHub. Um, it is I think honey something. So take a look at that on my GitHub if you want to understand that better. You could have a PDF can have macros embedded that could have HTML in the past that would reveal the IP address. You can put it on safest mode for Tor Browser. That's one thing you can do. That's a big move you can make. Take a look at my other video. I also have this video here on how to block programs, protect yourself, restricting programs. That can help prevent programs from calling home. It's another thing you could watch that'll help you have an understanding on using Tor better. That is what I have today, guys. I hope you appreciate this video. If you want to support work like this, you can go to buymecoffee.com slash politictech. I also have a public blog posted there where you can read some of my other thoughts on things and also some of my additional advice. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back later with more on how to protect your privacy.